Ooh. What is up guys, and of course, welcome back to another fucking Wi-Fi battle, this time of course in the VPL Week 5 versus Verlit, or his Eryfiel Solgalios. And yeah, before even going into the game, I have to mention of course his uh, team he's bringing. Um, the only thing here that didn't make, or that I was definitely expecting coming was Superior, but on that, this looks the part, this was basically what I was looking at when I was deciding how to decide my team. He's bringing here across Mimikyu, Beware, Mega Like a Sam, Psygard, and Empoleon. All these Pokemon make sense for the matchup, and um, yeah, uh, it definitely is offensively inborn, but that's how Verlet plays, and I'm very aware of this. Verlet is very much like me when it comes to Wi Fi battles. He'd rather have an offensive approach, he'd rather have uh, offensive checks versus defensive Pokemon, and I really like that. As I said, it's so much how I play myself. So I knew that this battle was going to be very, very straightforward no matter what, and it was basically a game of which one did offensive plays better. Now, my team here is clearly as offensively active. We have, of course, Tauros, Sheffos variant, Jolly this time, because I did need a bit of a bulk, and we have, of course, Body Slam, Zen Headbutt, uh, Ice Beam and Earthquake. Igalisco here, especially defensive, uh, with of course Toxic Orb uh, with uh, Acrobatics and. Um, no, sorry, not. I mean, Ice Fang, Earthquake, and uh, Roost. Delphox Scarf variant, able to outspeed a plus one Mimikyu. Uh, that was basically what I was going at. And uh, we have, of course, Fire Blast, Psychic, and Will O Wisp, and um, Hidden Power Ice. Made sense for the matchup since, of course, Saigar could very well set up. Uh, Cobalion, special set with Shuka Berry. We have Focus Blast, um, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power Eyes, and Volt Switch. Um, Alola Muck is an Assault Vest variant, fully defensive, actually, or fully specially defensive in HP. A few attack, I believe, like 16 or something like that. And uh, we have Poison Jab, Knockoff, Pursuit, and uh, Hidden Power Ice. Basically, filler, basically, if it falls to. Uh, um, basically, I don't want to be set up for it versus a Saigar if you got a Coil or Dragon Dance. I rather force a KO there for Hidden Power Ice there. Uh, because Saigar is such a threat for me in general. And of course, Tapu Koku, uh, enough to outspeed a superior at uh, Timid Nature. Uh, it's basically it's a modest variant here with Dazzling Gleam, Hidden Power Ice, U Turn, and Thunderbolt. So, yeah, as stated here, the biggest threat for my team is Saigar and Mega Gazam. The only reason Muck is here in the first place, considered I really want to play offensively, but the only reason Muck is here is because checking Mega like Sam so well, and possibly superior if you had to make it, which it didn't. So it is a setup for the mod, and I'm fully aware of this, and I'm going to do the best I can to try to capitalize on that. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry that um, Gliscor... The only reason it's here is because we want to check Heracross somehow. Heracross could possibly if scarf run through my team, and that's something I necessarily do not like. So the list score makes sense for this matchup. And other than that, when I'm gonna lead here, I'm gonna actually lead up with Tauros. I do believe Tauros overall does super effective damage against his whole team naturally. Uh, the lead I don't want to see is Heracross will be weird because both of them could be weird in the case that Heracross could possibly be scarfed and be weird clearly can survive us and hit but since fluffy ability is such a treat but yeah that was my general thought process going into this match so really with all this said let's of course go into the match so from the start here he actually gonna start off with Heracross and I was like oh god damn it really <laughs> So I can't necessarily stay in here. I'm, I'm not going to risk it at least now. Send in Gliscor. Gliscor is a safe switching. And I'm uh, going to send in, like I said, Bacchus here as uh, we going to see Swords Dance. At this point, I felt, okay, that, that's all right. We can deal with that. That's no problem. As Flame Orb is going to kick in. I was like, yeah, okay, maybe not. Um, there is no way in hell I can take this. And we at least know now he's not Scarfed. So that's a good thing. That means that Tapu Koku and, here, and Tauros one hit shot it without any doubt, really. And I'm gonna send in Tabu Koku, but because I don't see any possible safe switch into a Dazzling Gleam. Because it sends on Napoleon, it could very well be forced to take a Thunderbolt, and he does not want to take a Thunderbolt. So I'm just gonna go for the safe Dazzling Gleam, and we have basically two KOs in three turns, which is incredible. So we don't get Swift Bug here across, I do believe that's important. As we see Beware comes in, the way it sends it in, I'm very aware of that this is gonna be an Assault Vested version. Kubelian can take any hit from that. And with Shuka Berry in mind, I can even take an Earthquake if it so decides to go for it. So, with that said, it goes for Earthquake, it's nothing to it. 
He gets a crit on me here, but trust me, it doesn't matter. I was basically suspecting damage somewhere down the line of this. Uh, I was basically hoping that he would go for another Earthquake here, because I can actually survive it and connect my Flash Cannons. Uh, or not Flash Cannon, I mean Focus Blast. I do connect my Focus Blast. Sadly, Verlet is the smarter player here and goes for the Hammer Arm. That's definitely gonna KO. Uh, I couldn't really switch out to anything here. With Gliscor gone, I really have nothing to kind of take his offensive pressure. I lost my defensive check already. So, uh, we're gonna bring Rain Brown again, the same kind of reason here. Due to that he doesn't have a safe switch into Dazzling Gleam, I'm gonna go for Dazzling Gleam. That's that's it, that's pretty weird gone. So now we have two Pokemons gone in five turns, that's... That's something. <laughs> that's incredible. So anyway, he sends in Elika Sam here, I was suspecting him to go for a substitute here, trying to force me out. I was definitely feeling there's no way he's gonna go for a Psychic, with of course a Lola Muck in mind. So, I felt safer just going for U-turn, definitely reading him like a book, right? Mmm, I will say no. Um, Verlet does do the gutsy play here, he goes to Psychic. Uh, I am actually modest with some special defense here, so I am able to take it. I was supposed to be able to take it, but I don't KO in return, showing me that he has some bulk involved with him, as I'm not going to send in, of course, Arcel, which of course does check this Zelga sound really well. And, or, you know, it completely walls it to the pursuit in mind. But definitely felt that I should probably hard switch out to my muck here. Uh, definitely feel like I missed opportunity because I got so much damage onto Tabu Koku and I can no longer tank either Shadow Sneak or Extreme Sneak for, of course, Psyguard. So that's really, really unfortunate. Uh, so, of course, gonna send in Mimikyu. Now, I definitely know that I can survive a hit from it and I'm gonna go for Poison Jab, yeah, baiting for Poison. As we see Swords Dance, that's alright. That is definitely quite alright since. It's not that dangerous to toss me as long as I get the poison. As long as I get the poison, Mimikyu is dealt with. We get the poison. It is what it is. I mean, it's a, I do believe it's a 57% chance of poisoning with Poison Jab. Uh, with, of course, Poison Touch in mind. So, it's a pretty darn high chance. So, anyway, I'm going to decide to switch out and go to my Delphox. Try, trying to take, I should say, this um, um, play rough. And I do take it. And I felt that, you know, he knows I have a normal type, I could easily switch in, of course, my Tauros here. So I felt that he was going to feel that. Um, he's not. He's directly going to go for Shadow Sneak, which is incredible. Delphox, with that damage, it's not an effective of a Pokemon anyway. So I lose Delphox here, but at the same time, I can now safely bring in Tauros. Tauros is able to outspeed a Mimikyu. And at the range of HP it is now, it is easily KO'd by an even Earthquake. So I'm probably going to go for a safe remove here over Sin Headbutt mainly because I do want the damage so yeah <laughs> that's Mimikyu gone so you know we we are doing okay here i kind of feel that you know pokemons are dropping left and right <laughs> it's nothing really to it as empoleon gonna comes in i felt empoleon definitely gonna go for rocks that's the only chance he has to kill tabu coco outside of course extreme speeds so i gotta switch out go to rain bronze just try and take this opportunity go for a t-bolt uh, i mean that's my best play here as uh, he goes for skulls so, I mean, he got me, he got me good here, as <laughs> he really got me good. As I'm now going to bring in my Alola Muck. Now, here is my thought process. I knew that um, my best chance here is, of course, to try to whittle down Empoleon to a range where uh, Earthquake kills him, because at this point, Earthquake does not kill him, so I'm going to pretty much take away his leftovers. And then after this, I'm going to try to be KO'd by this Empoleon. Uh, I'm going to try to force him to KO me in a fashion that I know that I could do definitely damage onto him, but I also have Poison Jab, so I just want to wheel him to that sweet spot, and after this, basically hope I get a, eventually a bird to get wheeled down faster. But the reason I say this is because I really just wanted, uh, from this situation, to be at that point of HP where uh, I'm not going to start going for Poison Jab. The reason I went for Poison Jab is because he's immune to it, and he feel, uh, hopefully he feels that you know, I'm playing him for a fool, as next turn here, at that, this range of HP, I'm actually gonna go for Hidden Power Ice, hoping he would switch out, hoping I was trying to stall him out. Sadly, he doesn't fall for that bluff, he actually goes directly for the KO, and it's a bit unfortunate, because that would have been a lot, a, a safer lead way versus the Psyguard, as basically it's Toro's job now, hopefully, to KO, of course, Empoleon, but also that Ice Beam is... Um, in, in a range of a 2 hit KO, I don't want to be with that one to get, you know, getting a cold shoulder because of uh, having Jolly over Naive, as Jormandine is gonna come in, which of course is the serpent that actually ruined Asgard in Ragnarok. As we go for Ice Beam here and just hope it be 50%, be 50%, be 50%, it is not 50%, it's a 3 hit KO, it's super unfortunate, while I am bulky here, 
I can definitely take three, two more of those thousand arrows. I basically lose here if he has extreme speed. So it's not definitely not over. I mean, I'm glad the thousand arrows did so little. It definitely shows it's not offensive. As an ice cream, of course. It's gonna be close. It's definitely gonna be close, but it's definitely not enough. As he goes on another round, of course, thousand arrows. So all the things like, no, I just need one more. I just need one more, and I'm going to win. I, I got this in the bag. Don't have extreme speed, please. But alas, of course he has the extreme speed, and we lose here 1-0, but my god was this game exciting, it definitely was, we lose 1-0 here, and I don't know, I mean, in the end of the day, this game was so fast paced, it's so exciting, you know, it's a 22 turn battle, and I mean, what is that, I believe 6 Pokemon fell before 10 turns gone, that's something else, that definitely show how hyper offensive like, we both actually ended up being in this battle, and worst word, it was freaking great. Now on to, of course, my last thoughts about the game. One thing that did bother me, and it's, it, it, it isn't a big deal, but it's one of those things that I knew it would have changed the outcome completely had I decided against it. I should have been naive Tauros. Had I been naive Tauros over Jolly, I would have done over 50% to that Psyguard. But yeah, you know, I wanted to be more defensive, I wanted to be able to take hits from Superior. And that came to bite me in the ass. It definitely did. Another play I probably should have actually thought about before doing was, of course, Muck. The thing is here, I didn't want to go for a Sin Headbutt because it could miss versus Mimikyu, I could be swept by it. So I decided to switch in Delphox uh, instead of sacking Muck. Different two turns of, um, of Poison would have been enough to get a KO with, of course, Tauros with Sin Headbutt. So I should probably have gone for it. I definitely believe that that was, that was a missed opportunity. Um... But at the same time, you know, this is this is definitely the game we play. Um, the same thing with, of course, uh, Tabu Koko versus Alakazam was no reason for me of not switching into or hard switching to my uh, or to my uh, what do you call it, Muck, uh, in that environment. I felt that he was going to double switch on me or sub up. Both situations would have been unfortunate, but it wouldn't have been game breaking. So, yeah, um, basically, this game felt like a game of chicken. I didn't. I didn't do the balls in place as needed to be done, and Verla just kept going and just hoping that his offensive pressure and momentum would not end, and most certainly the way he's playing, that was definitely not going to change unless I called it, and I never did. <laughs> I mean, it, it just started turn one, I mean, come on, here across versus Tauros, and head about Oko's him, and he goes for it anyway, he goes for Sword Stance, hoping I would switch out, hoping he had died before he was scarfed. I mean, that's, that's incredible, that just shows that Verla definitely had an idea how to tackle my team. He definitely hoping that he was playing offensively enough for me to play defensively, and it sure as hell worked. And uh, for what it's worth, I enjoy this game a lot because I always, you know, when I design a team, I always design to offensively shake uh, with my defensive mon, his offensive mon. Like, that's the way I play. I use defensive Pokemon to offensive extent, and I feel like Verlet does the same thing. And it turns out to be just a hammer of very, very tough calls and very, very hard switches time after time. It becomes a different game. And hyper offensive style is something that not everybody grasps. Verl is definitely one of those that I would say is one of the better ones. He definitely gets the concept and it definitely works versus me. I'm pretty darn famous for it too. But if I had to say the better player here was definitely Verl because he stuck to it. I was backing back. I was, I was not feeling comfortable going offensively versus him and it sure as hell works in his favor and he wins 1-0 a very very fair 1-0 at that so at that of course said make sure to check out Verla's channel and of course his native channel is going to be linked down below i definitely enjoy his content even though i don't understand most of the things he says in his channel i definitely feel the passion i mean that's the thing when you talk your native tongue as i of course i talk swedish of course it it's a different feeling it sure as hell is damn enjoyable so I definitely encourage you guys to check out his channel or, and of course his Wi-Fi battles because I'm already included because I already recorded his battle. I felt like I'm one day behind, like all of the back. But yeah, guys, thank you of course so much for watching. And yeah, we're actually not too far behind. We're 3-2, I do believe. So it's it's not too bad. We can take another loss and it feels still comfortable. Anyway, guys, thank you of course for watching the VPL with me. And I'll see you guys, of course, in the next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.